When the railroad first arrived in Tucson 135 years ago, people here partied for a week. So we're taking a step back in time to celebrate once again at the Silver Spike Festival. And Tucson historians and authors Dave Devine and William Colt are here to tell us what the festival will have in store. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Great to be here. You look great in your hats. Oh, <laughs> now, <thank> you. <laughs> before we dive into the details of the event coming up, I want to talk about how Tucson changed 135 years ago with this railroad and what was Tucson like before we had the railroad? I'll tell you, before the railroad came, about 7,500 people, one story adobe buildings, uh, dust streets that were on a, uh, an angle, so you kind of walk like this, <laughs> and uh, no water system, no sewer system, a uh, lot of fights settled uh, yeah. <laughs> the hard way here in Tucson at that time, and uh, of course it remained the Wild West after uh, the railroad came, but things really changed in March 20th of 1880 when that train arrived. And one of the big differences was that uh, before the railroad arrived, it took three to four months to get merchandise here from the Midwest, so everything was very expensive, and obviously there weren't a lot of typical furnishings, lumber, almost anything that the people back then considered the normal way of life, and the railroad changed all that. And at the festival, we're gonna really kind of feel like we're taking a step back in time. We're doing reenactments, and people are gonna be dressed in uh, the time period. Uh, is that kind of what we're honoring? Yeah, that's what we're uh, excited about, uh, is filling that whole depot plaza with people that are uh, all dressed up in costume, and maybe cry, trying to create a little bit of Williamsburg setup uh, that people are used to back in the East, out here, right here in Tucson, and all dress up and pretend like it's 1880. <laughs> We're gonna party like it's 1880. That's it, that's it, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Well, and of course, the festival is gonna be at the Southern Arizona Transportation Museum. Tell us a little bit about that museum. Well, the museum was founded 10 years ago to honor the railroad history of this community, because not only did the railroad change this town, but in 1880, it brought the President of the United States here, Rutherford B. Hayes, and he couldn't have gotten here if it hadn't been for those tracks. And I love that this is going to be a family event. What a way for kids to come and have fun, but learn a little bit as well. Exactly. And our engine, number 1673, uh, was the last engine, steam engine that ever ran here in Tucson. And uh, it, it's open, the kids could climb up in there, it'll be smoking, and they can ring the actual bell in the engine. And we think it's taking a little bit of piece of Arizona history and taking a part in Arizona history. I think that's so cool. Something to bring your kids to, something for the whole family. Now what can we expect as far as food vendors and things like that? Well, we're going to have, uh, I might back up for a second and say that we'll have a, a toy train for the kids to ride on, a children's train. We'll have children's arts and crafts, uh, and we'll have free cake for everyone. Oh, hey, uh, free The cake. Uh, fourth uh, Calvary Band will be uh, playing for us, old 1880s marching tunes. We'll have the uh, garrison from the uh, Pueblo, uh, excuse me, the San Agustin Presidio del Tucson. We'll present the color guard for us of the five flags that fl flew over Arizona. And so uh, it's going to be a rich event. The other exciting thing is that we'll have the actual descendants of the men that were participating in the ceremony when the first train arrived. Wow. Uh, playing a small skit and reenacting the roles of their ancestors. And I know you brought some pieces here with you. I'm sure we're going to be able to see some more pieces because uh, of the museum and because of the festival. Absolutely. And as Bill said, there will be the descendants of Esteban Ochoa, the man who introduced the legislation to allow Southern Pacific to build across Arizona, his business partner, uh, Pickney Randolph Tully. The mayor of Tucson at that time was a man by the name of Robert Leatherwood. And then the editor of the Arizona Daily Star was L.C. Hughes. And all of their descendants will be doing this little skit to commemorate that day at the very spot at the depot where it still is today when Charles Crocker, one of the most powerful men in the United States, stepped off a train and was welcomed by the citizens of Tucson. Okay, cool. And uh, the people of Tucson gave the railroad a silver spike for coming to this barren land. <laughs> a big thank you, right? <laughs> so, uh, and the Southern Arizona Transportation Museum, it'll be their 10th anniversary. Uh, and so that'll be an exciting aspect of it, too. The museum is chock full of artifacts such as this, stories in both Spanish and English about the railroads coming here and the effects that it's uh, had on Tucson. 
Well, William, we can't end a uh, interview talking about trains this whole time without a little train noise for us. I know you've got something for us. Yes, yes. There we go. <laughs> that makes you feel like you're right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Gentlemen, well, thank, thank you, you so thank much you. for coming. The Silver Spike Festival will take place this Saturday starting at 10 a.m. at Tucson's Historic Depot. For more information, call 623-2223 or log on to TucsonHistoricDepot.org.